Hi everybody, this is Mustafa Kalami from Yarpus and in this video tutorial we're going to learn about genetic algorithms. Firstly, we will have a brief introduction to the theory of genetic algorithm and then we will implement a simple version of GA using MATLAB and Python. Okay, let's have a brief look to the theory of genetic algorithms. Actually, genetic algorithm is a special case of a class of algorithms known as evolutionary algorithms. And these algorithms are all about the evolution. They all try to simulate the process of biological evolution, but in the domain of numbers. And they can be used to solve a variety of problems, but mainly they're used to solve optimization problems. Let's have a look to the general definition of an optimization problem and its similarities to the process of evolution. And then we will have the general structure of evolutionary algorithms. And finally, we will have the general structure of GAs. Okay, let's assume that we have a function f which accepts a parameter x and we want to find the minimum value of this function and we know that x contains these elements x1, x2, x3 and xn and if we assume that x1, x2 uh, up to xn are all real numbers then x will be a member of r2n and we want to search among all possible solutions in this domain for this problem and we want to find this special solution x star which minimizes the value of objective function f of x so we have this problem and this is a an optimization problem and assume that we have a planet named earth and we want to create life on this planet actually we want to solve the problem of living on this planet and you know that nature solved this problem in millions of years and for example for conditions of north pole nature created polar bear and if the conditions change to jungle or mountains then it changed the same solution, the bear, to the formal bear, to brown or black bear, we know. And actually, we have a problem of living in different conditions, in different geographies, and we have some DNAs, all possible DNAs, which are created by four basic elements, for example, as the basis of the double helix of DNA, known as thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. And we have these four alphabets of life. And the nature found the effective combinations of these basic elements to create life forms which are optimum or suboptimum in different conditions of planet Earth. And we humans and all other species on this planet, we are all solutions to the problem of living on Earth. So these are similar. And similar to this structure of solution, we have DNAs here. And similar to this objective function, we have conditions of living in different geographies on Earth. So there is an obvious similarity here. And what's an evolutionary algorithm? we can simulate the process of evolution in the domain of numbers to solve this kind of optimization problems. So let's have a look to the general structure of an evolutionary algorithm. All of evolutionary algorithms start with initialization, which means creating some random solutions for optimization problem. So we have an initial population which contains some randomly generated solutions to the optimization problem and then we will pass this initial population to a loop known as evolution loop loop of evolution and the algorithm continues with that loop until some criteria satisfied so we have initial population here 
and we're going to pass this to loop of evolution. So first of all, we're going to select which member of current population, which is initial population, is eligible or which one has more right to have access to more food or mating opportunities and other things that generally creatures are competing for that. So we're going to perform selection here. And after this, we're going to perform some reproduction process here and The solutions are going to have offsprings. And what can be the offspring of a set of numbers? What can be the offspring of a solution for an optimization problem? It can be a similar solution. It can be a combination of some solutions known as parent solutions, just like in the nature, and they can cooperate to create new solutions, which probably is better and which probably inherits the advantages of its parents so they're going to reproduce and we're going to simulate the processes like crossing over which is simply the mating and we're going to simulate the mutation process in genetic algorithm which is altering some genes randomly to make the algorithm more explorative and to enable the algorithm to create some innovative solutions for the problem. So after this, we have a population of, of springs and we have our initial population to our original population of parents. And then we're going to perform another selection. And this is the loop of evolution. And if some termination criteria has been met, then we can terminate the execution of algorithm so we have the termination step here conditionally of course if the termination conditions are met then we can terminate the execution of evolutionary algorithm so we have this general structure we start with an initial population we select by evaluating the solutions and performing competition among solutions and they are competing to have more opportunities to reproduce. They reproduce and they create offsprings and offsprings plus parents form a larger population and then they compete to each other and they select new parents, they create new offsprings and this is being repeated until some termination criteria has been satisfied. And then we can terminate the execution of algorithm. This is the general structure of an evolutionary algorithm. And as I mentioned earlier, genetic algorithm known as GA is a special case of evolutionary algorithm and it contains all of these elements but with more specifications and next we are going to review the general structure of genetic algorithm the general structure of genetic algorithm is as follows we have these steps in genetic algorithm in the first step we are going to create an initial population so we're going to perform initialization and at the end of this step we have an initial population which is evaluated and we know what value of objective function they have after this we're going to perform the crossover operation which is a kind of reproduction so we're going to select parents and perform crossover this is selecting parents. Two parents are selected from the population and then they are crossed over to create two offsprings. So for two parents, we have two offsprings. And then we gather all offsprings as the population of offsprings. And then after that, we perform mutation or 
we are going to mutate off springs and meanwhile we can mutate the original population too to have some different solutions we can use any combination of crossover mutation on off springs population and the main population but here we're using this schema. We're selecting parents, we're creating the population of office springs, and then we are mutating the office springs, not the main population. After mutating office springs, we have a population of office springs mutated, and the original population, we're going to merge these two populations. So merge main population and office springs after this we have larger population with more members than our original population and we must select the best members of this population so we must evaluate them we must sort them and we must select the top members of that population so we're going to evaluate sort and select and after this we are going to check for termination conditions and if the termination criteria has been met then we can exit the algorithm and if it is needed to be continued then we are going to continue from step two so go to step two if it is needed so if it is needed we're going to step two and we're repeating the loop of evolution so this is the general structure of genetic algorithm but we must define these parts selecting parents crossing over mutation and that's it selecting here it must be defined as well and we must define this how we are going to select parents how we're going to perform crossover on two given parents and how we're going to mutate a given solution and how we're going to select members from a population and how we're going to select top members next we're going to discuss these operators of genetic algorithm First of all, let's talk about the crossover. Crossover is an operator which accepts data from two parents, parent one and parent two, and we give the information from parent one and parent two to crossover operator, and we get the information and the data for two office springs office spring one and office spring two so crossover uses some mathematical operators to combine the information from two parents and two office springs inherit their properties their characteristics from two parents and to do so for example let's assume that we have chromosomes in binary format chromosomes for example this is a chromosome p1 and it is given by this binary numbers this set of binary numbers we have eight binary numbers zeros and ones as our first parent we can show this as a graphical shape here we're going to use a binary cells and we're going to fill the cells corresponding to values of ones this is our first parent let's assume that we have another parent here one 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 zero zero one and zero and let's show this as a graphical shape here we have ones here we have a one here and this is the graphical representation of our chromosomes and if we're going to combine the information of these two parents we can do this in several ways using several operators 
I'm going to copy these cells and let's move this here and let's put them close to each other. We can, for example, I'm going to duplicate this to use for other operators. And then, for example, we can cut this from this place and then switch these parts. This is known as single point crossover. We're going to randomly select the position for cutting both of chromosomes and then switching one part. For example, the right hand side part. And this results in two new chromosomes. We can simply display them as this. These parts remain same, so we have these parts, but the right hand side part parts are switched, so we have just one here and we have one here and two ones here and these are offsprings these are parents and this is offspring one and this is the offspring two and they inherited some of characteristics from first parent and some of them from the second parent and we have two offsprings and hopefully for example if the answer is all zeros, then offspring one will perform better, will outperform its parents and the other offspring, its sibling. So, hopefully, crossover will improve our solutions. And if we perform this crossover operation in several generations, then we will have better and better solutions and in some iteration, in some generation, we will probably find the solution, the optimal solution of the problem. This is the simplest crossover operator, single point operator, but we can, for example, do another type of crossover, for example, two point or double point crossover, which has two cutting points. And for example, we select these two cutting points and we switch the middle part here to get new of a springs so this is double point or two point crossover and if we do so we'll get two of a springs in this form these parts and these parts remain same so we have here and we have this here and we have this here and we have this here and we're going to change the these parts these middle parts so we have this here and we have this here and this is the office spring one and this is the office spring two these are two office springs created by double point crossover remember that these cutting points are defined randomly and it makes possible to create a set of possible of springs and it is a randomized operation at all and this is another crossover operator we have another one but here we are going to say that which one of genes are inherited for example from first parent and which one of them are inherited from second parent here i'm going to for example, say that for first of a spring, these genes are inherited from first parent, these genes, these five genes, and the other ones are inherited from second parent. We can model these as zeros and ones, and you can write instead of these marks one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, and zero. And you can numerically multiply this element wise by this and its complement by this to get the offsprings. Let's write down the complement of these values here. We have cross here, cross here. These are complements of these check marks. And we have check marks here. So 
its numerical equivalent is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1. So we can multiply this sequence by first parent element wise and add it to the multiplication of this sequence by this parent. And then we can find the value of first offspring. And this converts the, office, the process of generating new offsprings to an arithmetic, to a mathematical operation. This is called uniform crossover. So we have uniform crossover here. And if we're going to find the values of offsprings, we can calculate this in this way. For example, 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1 equals to 0. And it can be found directly from this. We inherit this gene from first parent for this offspring, for the first offspring. And is 0, and 1 times 1 equals to 1. So we fill this. And so on. We use these sequences empty will remain empty empty will remain empty we use this empty will remain empty and we use this and finally that's it if you calculate all of these or if you gather these five genes from first parent and these three genes from second parent you'll get this and to create the second of a spring of a spring two we do this in reverse direction with reversed values for these flags actually and then for example for this gene it must inherit from the second parent so it will be this and it will be one it will be one here and it will be empty it will be one here and it will be empty and it will be one here and it will be one as well. So we have these offsprings as outputs of uniform crossover. And if we want to write it as mathematical operations, assume that we have first parent, for example, x1 equals to x11, x12, x13 up to x1n. This is our first parent, and we have the second parent as well, x21, x22, x23, x2n. We have these parents, and we're going to calculate these values for offsprings y1 equals to y11, 12, 13, 1n, and the other offspring. We have these offsprings, these are parents, and these are offsprings. And to calculate these values, we must create some flags. For example, a vector of binary numbers, zeros and ones, named alpha, and we have alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, up to alpha n, and then we will have the value of two of the springs as this. Y1 i will be equal to alpha i x1 i plus 1 minus alpha i x2 i. And that's if alpha i equals to 1, then y1 i will be equal to x1 i. So the first of a spring will inherit the gene the ith gene from first parent if alpha i equals to one and if alpha i equals to zero then this term will be zero and this term will be one minus alpha i will be one and so if alpha i is zero then the first of a spring will inherit from second parent and we calculate y2 i by this one minus alpha i x1 i plus alpha i x2 i and you see that this is the 
mathematical formula for these are the mathematical formula for uniform crossover and we have this as a uniform crossover we reviewed three types of crossover operators single point crossover double point crossover and uniform crossover which can be represented by these equations as well the next operator which i'm going to talk about is mutation in nature mutation is a kind of error in replicating and copying genes and we included this mechanism and simulated inside genetic algorithm to add some levels of errors which increases the explorative abilities of genetic algorithm and it makes possible to create innovative and revolutionary solutions for our problem so it's a good idea to have a simulated mutation process and to do this we have an operation which accepts a single solution and it returns mutated version of that solution a mutant actually and it works in this way for example for the binary representation for now i'm going to talk about the binary representation and uh, later we will discuss about the mutation in continuous or real variables space okay for example assume that we have this solution this chromosome of binary genes x1 x2 up to xn and we know that all of these are either 0 or 1 and to mutate this for example a simple method can be this firstly we will select an index j randomly from 1 to up to n so j is a random number in this range in this set this is randomly selected and after selecting an index we are going to alter xj using this set of equations we have x prime as this x prime 1 x prime 2 up to x prime n and we have x prime i generally equal to xi for i's that are not equal to j and if i is equal to j then we must replace this value with a different value and we know that we have zero either one as possible values so we're going to use this equation this expression which changes zeros to ones and ones to zeros so if xi is zero then x prime i will be one and if xi is one then x prime i will be zero so this changes the value of x prime i and this is a simple process this is a simple mutation for binary representation and we can use this however if you want you can select more than one index and you can select multiple indices to perform this kind of change in binary representation and that is defined by mutation rate and that's selecting for example two genes out of 100 genes is equivalent to a mutation rate of a two percent and if you want you can increase the level of mutation or the mutation rate and that's up to you however for different kind of problems and for different kind of search spaces we will use different mutation rates and that's that parameter should be set according to the conditions of problem and search space okay so we have this operator here and we know that after crossing over we have some office springs and we're going to mutate those office springs to get mutated or mutant office springs so this is the end of reproduction phase here steps two and three then we're going to talk about the selection operator here and the selection operator here which are different despite the fact they are represented by the same word they are different in nature so let's talk about the selection operator here let's have a look to options we have to perform 
parent selection. Assume that we have a population and we have individuals in this population which are evaluated and we have the objective values and the population size is n pop. We have n pop members in this population. The simplest option we have is random selection. And that's selecting parents randomly from this population. And that's equivalent to selecting, for example, K as the index of individual, which is going to be a parent as a random number in this range, in the set one, two, three, up to N pop. So we're going to select one member from this set randomly. And actually, we're going to select the corresponding member in this population. It's a simple way to perform parent selection, but it's not the best way because it does not use any information about the fitness of solutions and individuals in the population. So it's just a simple way to perform parent selection. As the second method, we have tournament selection here. And that's running several tournaments among individuals of the population first we select a few individuals from population for example we select five members of the population five individuals and then we're going to select one of them as the winner if we select the best member of the selected group then we're going to perform deterministic tournament selection and that's selecting the best member of selected group as the winner of tournament. However, there are probabilistic versions of tournament selection too, and that's selecting a member of tournament as the winner with a probability according to a probability distribution. And this probability distribution defines more selection probability for better individuals. For example, the best member of the group has the highest selection probability and the worst member has the lowest selection probability. And we define the probability distribution of selection in the descending order of fitness. And this is the tournament selection. It's one of methods used to perform parent selection in genetic algorithms. And the third method we are going to talk about is roulette wheel selection. And this is performed by defining a probability distribution over the population. And similar to the probabilistic tournament selection, we're going to define this probability distribution in a way that the better members of the population, the better individuals, have more probability of selection as parents. And this can be defined in various ways. And when we want to implement the roulette wheel selection, we will discuss about the ways that are available to define the selection probabilities. But after this, actually, we're going to create a roulette wheel with areas proportional to the selection probabilities of our members. And we have an indicator here we're going to rotate this wheel and after it stops then for example we select this part because the indicator shows this area and this area is proportional to the selection probability this is defined in this way and this is a simulated version of the roulette wheel we have in games and lotteries for example this is the other method it has similarities with tournament selection in random selection, we have same probability for all of members in the population, but this is not fair. We know this, but it is simple. It is easy to implement. In tournament selection, we're going to give chance of selection for the better methods, the more chance of selection for better individuals. And in the roulette wheel selection, we're doing this in a different way. And we have the chance of selection for any individual in the population, but the better the individual, the more chance of 
selection it has. In the fifth step of our genetic algorithm, we have evaluation, sorting, and selection. And before that, we have the merging step, which merges main population with office springs, newly created office springs, which are the results of crossing over and mutation. We have these steps, and let's have a look to the way we carry out these steps. We have a population of parents here, our current population, named as pop T, for example. And this is our main population. And the size of this, I'm going to write this here, is in pop. And we have a set of newly created office springs, which are results of crossover and mutation. And I'm going to indicate this with children at time T. And this is, for example, of size M. If we merge these two populations, we will get a population of size N pop plus M. And this is a merged population. And this step is merging. After this, we're going to sort this population according to the value of objective function. And the sorting process enables us to have better members of population on top. So the members on top of population are generally better than the lower members. So we have this sorted population, but the size of this merged and sorted population is still n pop plus n. And then to start next generation, we must select n pop members to have pop t plus one. So we're going to form pop t plus one of size n pop. And actually we're going to delete m members of this population. And that's selecting this part and removing these parts from the sorted merged population. And that's it. The steps four and five are shown here using this diagram. Firstly, we merge these population and then we sort and then we delete M worst members from end of population and then we have pop T plus one. And then again, we will create children T plus one. We will merge them, we will sort them, we will truncate from end of sorted and merged population and we will form pop t plus two and so on and this is the loop of evolution which guarantees to have better and better solutions in different generations at least we have the same records saved in our population and we have probably some progresses in the finding better solutions for our optimization problem and that's it we reviewed the theoretical foundation of genetic algorithm here and we're ready to implement ga from scratch and we'll start with matlab firstly and then we will continue with python implementation of ga as well and we will solve some other problems firstly we will implement the binary genetic algorithm and then we will discuss about the real coded or real genetic algorithm which deals with real valued variables and real parameters in optimization problems and then we will implement them in python as well and let's do this